So I'm going on recording. This is video five. I'm sick and my voice is going out. Um, but as my friend says, can't stop, won't stop. Except for I totally can stop and I will stop after this. But uh, returning back to the stone block, I may not post the videos in this order, but I just paused from working on that to uh, to a couple other basic videos, and I was working on these other tiles while those videos were processing. Anyway, we're gonna go back to our stone block. One thing I forgot to mention before was about the outline. Um, I use a solid black for sketching out stuff, as you can see, um, like the form of things, but that should really be, just be considered temporary. Uh, so I'm gonna use a color I selected for the outline of this color stone and that's gonna help ease the block into the world um so just forgot to do that before okay what I want to do now is I want to draw an insignia on top of the stone block um and again I sketched this out beforehand so I know exactly what I'm doing if you're working from scratch well you'll probably want to play with things but um it's not terribly complex but what I'm going to do is, uh, since I don't want to mess up or risk messing up this texture of the stone block, I'm going to make a new layer, and you can do that with this button up here. Um, it appears in the layer menu down here. A little bit note, little note about transparency. You can set it this way, click the eyedropper, right click, or I guess you want know, to right click, um, left click, left click, whatever color you want to be transparent. It, when you make a new layer, it'll, um, it'll set the transparency to white by default. Uh, but on layer one, I had said that earlier, uh, on layer one, the transparency is usually off by default. So I'm on layer two right now. And like I did with these, um, the other form things that I haven't worked on yet, uh, like the outlines and such, I'm just going to draw an outline of what I want on top of it. And again, this is just a little insignia. So this is going to be the first introduction on how you actually draw for form. And... The answer to that is you learn to make do and present the image you want with little squares, which is what spraying is, but uh, so I basically just stated the obvious, but what I mean by that is that it takes more practice than doing other things like texture and color. So what I'm going for is kind of a fancy X shape. I don't like it being doubled up like that though, even though it does cross. I'm going to start with one line, so we're going to lean to the left a little bit. Because these are each 16 tiles, 32 total, even though I only want like a width of one for the center of the X, I have to choose, because it's an even number, whether it leans to the left or right. And there will be situations you'll encounter like that, and you will learn to get over it. Um. I'm just going to make a really very curvy looking figure here. I can go into detail on how you make curves well with with squares, god forbid. Um, there is actually a specific technique to it. And I am following that here. But uh, I can go into detail on that on a different die, day. On a different die, okay. On a different day when I have not made five videos in a row. Just seeing how that looks. I actually, I actually like that better. In fact, I might have the X swivel. That way it balances itself out. Okay. And you see, I can move these um, black parts across the thingy because they're on a different layer, so it doesn't mess up my texture underneath, which is great, because I don't like messing up my texture underneath. And I don't think you would either. <laughs> so... I've drawn the bottom a little bit more innately in my sketches, but I'm not sure if I'm going to follow that. We'll see how I feel in like two seconds. And by that, I mean like 30. <laughs> yeah, I guess I am feeling kind of ornate. <laughs> okay. I mean, by that, I mean it's just a more dramatic loopy thing. That's the technical term for it, by the way, a loopy thing. Um, then up top. Uh, 
Okay, so there's the outline. Um, I'm not sure I like that in the center. Maybe if I... No. Uh, it's, it leans to the right, but that'll have to because it looks better than that. I think anyway. Okay. So next thing I'm going to do is uh, go over this with the outline color because as I just finished explaining in my color video, you never want to actually use a solid black. Um, plus that would be too harsh for appearing as if it was naturally engraved into the stone. <laughs> the general idea here is that when you're working with something, uh, you want to establish the form first, and by that I mean draft it out like I've just done. And then you want to touch up on the details because you want to make sure that your form is clear because if you have to redo that and you've already done a bunch of detail work, you've just flushed a lot of work. It's much easier to solidify the form first. That is the actual shape of what you're working on. And then move into this finer details like color and texture and blending. So we've been over color and texture. Blending. Um, just making the lines smooth into each other. I guess there's some like weird spraying term called jaggies or something that people seem to know and people seem to think I should know, but I don't know about that. I never formally learned how to spread, I just kind of taught myself. Um, so I don't know about weird terms like that, but I think it's to prevent what people, some people call jaggies. And that is basically, if you look in the thumbnail up here, you can see how the curve isn't exactly smooth. It's there, it's curved, but it doesn't really smooth into the rest of the block. So we're gonna fix that. Um, I'm gonna look at the center first. I'm gonna see if I can actually balance this out by using some lighter colors where the other side would be. And what if I did this? I'm okay with that. Cause that doesn't look like such a harsh, thick center line because I'm using a light, lighter color. Um, but in this way, I'm going to continue to kind of smooth out the edges of the curve, if that makes sense. It's kind of strange to think about curves having edges, but when you're working with small squares, they do. And I'm going to use light color like here and just kind of fill in the corners where it looks a little lacking. When I say lacking, it's, again, just to smooth it out. Um, when I say lacking, I mean it looks too sharp. I'm going to do the same on this other side. In retrospect, I probably should have just done one side and um, mirrored it. Like you see in my design here, like this part, for instance, I've only done the left side because in order to ensure symmetry, I'm just going to copy-paste it and uh, mirror it. Just half cheating and half the most effective way by far. So, whatever. I don't, I don't know if you can cheat in spraying. It's not like anybody makes up rules. No, you must sprite this way. I don't like that dark edge. Whoops. Now this part is intersecting the crack, which makes it look weird. So I'm going to tone down that crack. Steer off a different way. Okay, I think I can live with that. I say as I change it again. Alright, and the top of that X looks pretty good. Mostly. Now the bottom, we're just going to do the same thing. I would pause the video, but it's actually kind of annoying to edit videos together like I have been. So, y'all can bear with me. I'll try and find... Again, this crack is in the way. I planned my cracks really poorly, actually. Over it. Just doing the outside edges of the curve. <coughs> um, so it doesn't look as harsh as it turns. I feel like 
I should explain that better, but on the other hand, you can see what I'm doing, so I'll let you figure that out. Now, I'm normally drawing the second lightest shade through the corners to help smooth it. In this case, because these corners are sharper, I'm not going to do that because that just makes it look like actually a real corner, like when it's supposed to be there. God forbid. Curves are actually really difficult for um, inexperienced braggers. There's this curve tool in Graphic Scale, and I think a lot of other programs have that. And it does a bad job, to be honest. Maybe that's just Graphic Scales. Maybe that's one of its few short points. But I feel like, I feel like non-anti-alias, that is, blurred curving tools are insufficient to actually finding something that looks good. So, um, random discourse aside, I think that's a wrap. We have this pretty little X on our giant stone block, and that's going to be it for um, how you convert, how you start with an outline for a form, and then just slowly merge that into the rest of your piece. Finally, in order to combine layers, I'm going to use this button here. It combines all visible layers. It'll also erase transparency if that's a consideration. Um, but that's that. Thank you guys for watching. I'm saying that now to include the past five, four, this is the number five, past four videos too. Um, and I will endeavor to do a character sprite tutorial soon as well. Um, and I may or may not do like some other videos, not today, God, I can't speak. Um, may do some other videos as I'm working on these tiles, like on how to do a brick texture, for instance. But we will cross that bridge when we come to it. Okay. Bye. I love you all. Except for you. No, I'm just kidding. I love you too.